Claire Curran. Mr. Speaker, Happy New Year. Thank you. And Happy New Year to everybody um, across the House. It's my view that we should be relentlessly positive and creative about our economy. But the hands-off, leave-it-to-the-market approach of this government uh, has failed uh, all over the world. And it's clearly failing in New Zealand. We're on the cusp of a new era, and it's an era when new jobs and new wealth can be created in ways that we haven't thought of, in ways that won't harm our environment, and in ways that New Zealand, despite our size and our geographical isolation, can punch above its weight. Because this is the era, Mr Speaker, of digital ambition, when our ability to innovate and to, new, to use technology to drive new business growth, to create the new manufacturers of the future, should be in place. Our intellectual property, our intellectual know-how and our ability to be innovative is one of the great strengths of our nation. But you wouldn't know it given the pedestrian nature of this government's attitude to an environment in which innovation can flourish and new intellectual property can be born. We're falling short, and let me tell you how. Late last year, in the Commerce Select Committee in December, I asked the Chief Executive of the Ministry for Everything, Moby, two questions which I thought were pretty important. I asked what work the Ministry, which is responsible for economic development, was being done in reviewing its sectors to identify the number of jobs that can be created, in particular the 170,000 jobs that this government said two years ago it would create by 2015. Is that right? None was the answer. There's no work being done on where these jobs might come from. This was the CEO of the ministry which advises the government on economic development. He said, quote, we don't do forecasts in job creation on a sector by sector basis. So what do they do? Cross their fingers and hope that these jobs will just miraculously appear somewhere in the economy. And this was despite the fact that John Key and Bill English both said that this would happen. The other extraordinary revelation in that select committee was that our economic development ministry does not have a clue what is the worth to New Zealand of our intellectual property. The committee was told that we are indeed supposed to be fostering an innovation economy. That meant an economy which has a strong knowledge base to it. But then he went on to say that the ministry's job was to focus more on the legal regime because we're an importer of knowledge. In other words, to provide the environment that protects the legal rights of those companies which export their knowledge to us, not the companies in New Zealand which are creating the knowledge which would then be exported and provide a return back home. Well, here's how the US values its intellectual property. They've done a lot of work to quantify and describe IP as a sector. 75 industries associated with IP, $5 trillion in value-added products, services and services, etc., 40 million jobs, 27.1 million of which are direct jobs, equating to 35% of GDP. And that is a recent report. The US is fiercely protecting, as we know, its knowledge-based economy, and I ask, why aren't we? In Australia, in a report released just a few weeks ago, it's been identified that the education and research institutions, libraries and cultural institutions, digital and internet and web hosting providers contribute 14% to Australia's GDP, or an amount of $182 billion, employ 21% of the paid workforce, or almost 2.4 million people, and pay wages and salaries of $116 billion. These figures have all grown significantly faster than the rest of the economy between 2007 and 2010. And it's estimated that a more flexible and technology-neutral 
neutral copyright regime which meets the digital reality of the 21st century and the evolving needs of society would add additional value to the Australian economy of $600 million a year. And that's not all, Mr Speaker. The Boston Consulting Group released a report in October last year which stated the internet economy in the developed markets of the G20 is forecast to grow at an annual rate of 8% over the next five years. In developing markets, annual growth is expected to be 18%. These rates far outpace just about every traditional economic sector. So not only is growth delivering new jobs across the employment spectrum, from uh, app developers to smartphone manufacturers, from internet marketers to um, what they call big data analysts, but the jobs this growth creates are more valuable than others. And estimates show that in the US, the multiplier effect for high-tech positions is three times that for jobs in traditional manufacturing. Now, Mr Speaker, where is the analysis in our country? Where is the analysis? In New Zealand, we have none, and our ministry is not doing any. And why is that? I think it's a pretty important question. We're not interested in pursuing it. We're not driving economic growth based on digital ambition. Instead, as Stephen Joyce said in an extraordinary interview on the 7th of January, our future lies in wood processing. Today, I attended lunch in Parliament with Sir Tim Berners-Lee, the inventor of the World Wide Web, along with a number of my colleagues across the House. As after he spoke to that cross-parliamentary cross group of politicians, he said to me and others that one of the most important things that your country could do is to abolish patents for software. Your country will become a place where innovators want to be. More than two years ago, the Commerce Select Committee unanimously decided to exclude software patents as part of its review of the Patent Act of 1953. And that decision was supported by our local IT industry. Mid last year, after fierce lobbying from multinationals, the new Minister of Commerce, Craig, Craig Foss, in his wisdom, that's sarcasm, uh, bowed to pressure and inserted an amendment to the bill which will completely change the intent. That amendment is opposed utterly by New Zealand's IT industry, including the Institute of IT Professionals, NZ RISE, New Zealand's Open Source Society, and over 1,200 signatories to an industry petition. But it's supported, Mr Speaker, by the multinational IT companies. It introduces unnecessary ambiguity into the legislation, it undermines its stated purpose, the intentions of the Select Committee and his own stated objective. It's complete madness and it's anti-Kiwi innovation and digital ambition. Kowtowing to the multinationals may be national's way, but it isn't Labour's. We've got to have digital ambition and our future prosperity will be carved out by backing the talent of businesses working in high-tech, Kiwi businesses. A thriving manufacturing sector is at the heart of Labour's vision. A weightless economy is integral to that. Where is the analysis? Where is the plan around that? I don't see it. I don't hear it. It's not there from this government. The manufacturing inquiry, Mr Speaker, that's um, occurring at the moment as a result of a cross-party initiative between Labor, the Greens and New Zealand First and MANA is integral. So is getting our patent laws right. Quantifying the strength of our intellectual property sector might kickstart us to realise our own worth. Good speech. Very good speech. In McKelvey.